Now, awaken, awaken, awaken. Well, we're going into some challenging information here and in the next section, so let me focus again. Um, the idea that this, uh, this is a lost cause that we're involved in here is no way it's a lost cause. We take our power back, game over. So we can paint another picture. Please hold that thought because it's, um, it's very, very important we don't get pulled into fear by seeing what we're involved with. Now, Gino Cristomurdi said something very, very true when he said, if we can really understand the problem, the answer will come out of it because the answer is not separate from the problem. They're indivisible. And you know, what I find in like some what they call new age areas and stuff like that is you mustn't talk about anything negative. Oh no. Well, I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I've never come across any knowledge that was negative. I've come across knowledge I'd rather not uh, be true, but I've never come across knowledge that's actually negative. Ignorance is freaking negative, not knowledge, because you can do something with knowledge. And so the idea that you know, we should be frightened of, 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 of looking at things as they really are, I mean, it's just another version of looking the other way and hoping it will go away. It won't. So when people say, well, What's the solutions? Well, fundamental to any solution is to understand the nature of what we're dealing with. Because then we've got a much better chance of dealing with it. We know what we, we've got to deal with. And, you know, a lot in the conspiracy research arena, like I said earlier, brilliant. There's so many people involved in this now. But the vast majority of them will not go even close to where we're going to go in the next two hours or so because of religious belief systems or because, well, even if it's true and I say it, I'm going to lose my credibility. I think you lose your credibility if you don't go with what you, be, you believe to be true and you edit that on the basis of what will people think of me if I say it. That's how we got into this freaking mess. And unless we understand how deep the rabbit hole goes and what we're dealing with, we're never going to find an answer to it. And just stockpiling weapons and, and fighting the system is just playing into the system's hands for reasons that will become clear, indeed, uh, possibly already have. So we are infinite awareness, uh, capable of multiple realities and perceiving multiple realities. We've been caught in the bamboozle, which has led to this and this through the uh, control of perception. So who or what is ultimately behind this? Uh, or at least uh, the depth of the rabbit hole we've got so far. Well, they ain't for a start, because they're just here today, gone tomorrow, people who are just puppets of a system that's here yesterday, today, tomorrow, and the next day. Um, it's not him. I don't care if he's supposed to be the most powerful man in the world. He ain't. He's another bloody glove puppet. And anyone in that job, the same applies to. It's not him either. Here today, gone tomorrow, uh, presidents and leaders who are replaced by other leaders. But the thing, the system, the direction goes on because there's something behind that that's pushing that direction on. And nor even is it the corporations. They're still at the level of playing out the control. It's not actually at the point of creating it. It's not the origin. It's not people sitting around tables. They're still at the point of playing it out. You can go into the shadows and you can get closer to where it's coming from, but you're still at the play out level. You go even deeper into the rabbit hole, really deep into the web. And that's where you find people like the Rothschilds and such like. You don't see us, but we control your life. But there's levels beyond that, where it's coming from. But where is it? Okay, well, I'm gonna to cut to the freaking chase, really. The truth doesn't change because you don't wanna hear it. Now, <laughs> Obviously, I can't go into great detail with this. I mean, the, the perception deception is that bloody big. This the whole day is about connecting dots to show the picture. And all I can say is for 25 years, I've been full time on this and the, the evidence has brought me to this uh, conclusion. Um, there's no one out there, you see? All that is there's no one out there. And when you think that what we're seeing is only what is uh, within a narrow band of visible light and then you think what possibilities lie beyond that in the great infinite forever the idea 
that we are alone is absolutely beyond ludicrous. And the fact that you can be seen as crazy for believing that shows how inverted the system is. This w reality, this infinity, is teeming with different expressions of life. And some of it's interacting with us. This is um, Professor of Mathematics and Astronomy at Queen's Mary University, London, Bernard Carr. He said, our consciousness interacts with another dimension, actually many other dimensions. Our physical senses only show us a three-dimensional universe. What exists in the higher dimensions are entities we cannot touch with our physical senses. Exactly. So, the idea that we just operate in isolation of everything else is, for me, uh, crazy. So, like I say, I'll cut to the chase. This reality that we're experiencing has been hijacked by a force that some ancient people call archons, but there's different names right across the ancient world for the same force, the same entities. This is when the penny drops, when all these different names for the gods all over the world turn out to be different names for the same force because they're described in the same way. And um, all over the world you see this. Uh, in um, the Far East, Central America and other places, they're known as the serpent gods. The Zulus call them the Chittahuri, the children of the serpent. They're the Anunnaki in, uh, in Sumer, Babylon, now Iraq. They're our snake brothers to the Hopi people of um, North America. They're the star people, many, many uh, examples of that. They are the demons of Christianity. To the Gnostics, they are archons. And to the Islamic and pre-Islamic world, they're called the jinn. And in their prime form, they are energetic uh, in, in nature, but they can take form, as I will talk about. So, like I say, they're described so much in the same way, because they, they're different names for the same thing. So, the uh, Gnostic people, uh, not the Christian Gnostics, the pre-Christian Gnostics, that ran the Great Library at Alexandria, and they also manifested as the Cathars in southern France, they say that the archons are made from luminous fire. The jinn, according to Islamic and pre-Islamic uh, belief, are made from smokeless fire. And you see this correlation of description um, wherever you go. Now this, for me, was one of the great finds ever in terms of understanding the nature of what is happening. At Nagamadi in um, Egypt, about 77 miles north of, of Luxor on the Nile, in 1945, a sealed jar was found with loads and loads of documents in it, leather bound. And they told um, the beliefs and the perceptions of this people called the Gnostics. And the Gnostics um, had a completely different um, view of reality than religion, which is why the Roman Catholic church and the Roman church tried to destroy them wherever they got um, any strength and any foothold. They ran the great library at Alexandria, which had something like half a million scrolls uh, detailing the beliefs of the ancient world and the, the history of the ancient world, destroyed um, by the Roman church. And like I say, the Cathars, who were destroyed again by the Roman church in 12... Uh, 44, I think it was, at, uh, at uh, uh, that uh, place in France, Montségur, that fort on the hill where I've been a couple of times. The religious establishment wanted these people destroyed because they were dangerous, because they had the truth they didn't want the people to know about. And um, this is what these scrolls um, and this find at Nagamadi said. One-fifth of the texts, and there were lots of them, were about a force called, they called the Archons, which they, they say created our physical universe, and they equated them with the Judeo-Christian Yahweh Jehovah God. And when you see the Old Testament, kill them and flog them and all that stuff, God, 
Um, it fits precisely with the descriptions of It's very, very important we don't get pulled into fear by seeing what we're involved with. Now, Gino Cristomurdi said something very, very true when he said, now, awaken, awaken, awaken. Well, we're going into some challenging information here and in the next section, so let me focus again. Um, the idea that this, uh, this is a lost cause that we're involved in here is no way is a lost cause. We take our power back, game over. So we can paint another picture. Please hold that thought because it's... Uh, if we can really understand the problem, the answer will come out of it because the answer is not separate from the problem. They're indivisible. And you know, what I find in like some what they call new age areas and stuff like that is you mustn't talk about anything negative. Oh no. Well, I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I've never come across any knowledge